The next group of books in the Old Testament provide a chronology of the nation founded by God and their relationship with the Lord. In this video, we'll review the books of history. There are 12 books in this category written by various authors, including Samuel and Ezra the scribe, among others. These books chronicle the history of the nation of Israel from the death of Moses to the return of a remnant after 70 years of exile in Babylon. There's some overlap in the record, and we'll discuss that in a later video. The books of history are Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Let's take a look at each of these. Joshua. This book gives an account of Joshua's leadership after the death of Moses. Joshua is characterized as a faithful servant of God who leads the people across the Jordan River into the land of Canaan. The conquest of the land and division of the inheritance among the tribes of Israel is detailed, ending with Joshua's appeal to the people to remain faithful to God. Judges provides a look at the peaks and valleys of the Hebrews' relationship with God following the death of Joshua. During times of faithfulness, they prospered. When they fell away and neglected God, their enemies were allowed to oppress them. When the people cried to God, he answered by bringing forth a leader to deliver them. These leaders were called judges, the last of which was Samuel. Ruth records events that occurred during the time of the judges. A Hebrew woman named Naomi has lost her husband and two sons after going to Moab during a famine. Ruth, one of her daughters-in-law, refuses to leave Naomi and accompanies her back to Israel. After their return, Ruth is favored by a relative, Boaz, who eventually marries her. This is a remarkable story of devotion, integrity, and some of the more obscure aspects of the Law of Moses. Notable about the book is that Ruth is the great-grandmother of King David. First Samuel begins with the life of Samuel, the last judge of Israel, and the nation's desire for a king. After receiving warnings from God about what a king would be like, the people insist on the appointment of a monarch, resulting in the selection of Saul as the first king of Israel. The book gives the account of Saul's reign and rejection by God leading to the selection of David as his successor. The book ends with the story of Saul's death. 2 Samuel continues the story of the kingdom of Israel during the reign of David. Significant events are recorded as the man after God's own heart leads the nation and serves God. David's faithfulness, as well as his faults, are detailed in the accounts. 1 Kings begins with the death of David and the assumption of the throne by Solomon. During his reign, the temple is built in Jerusalem. As Solomon grew older and was influenced by his foreign wives, he practiced idolatry for which God informed him that ten of the tribes of Israel would be lost during his son's reign. The kingdom is divided during the reign of Rehoboam, Solomon's son, as was foretold. The latter part of the book details events in the northern kingdom known as Israel through the beginning of the reign of Ahaziah, the son of Ahab. Kings of the southern kingdom of Judah are mentioned, but the majority of the content deals with the northern kings. 2 Kings continues the history of the kings of both the northern and southern kingdoms. The work of the prophets is presented in the book as they delivered God's messages to the kings. The fall of both the northern and southern kingdoms is detailed in the book as well. Written after the return from Babylonian exile, 1 Chronicles begins with a genealogy of those who returned from the captivity. The narrative begins with the death of Saul, the first king of Israel, in chapter 10. The remainder of the book covers the reign of David, ending with his death. Second Chronicles continues the history of the kings of the southern kingdom of Judah following the death of David. The narrative provides more detail about the reign of the southern kings than that given in First and Second Kings. The book ends with the destruction of the southern kingdom of Judah by the Babylonians. Ezra records the decree of Cyrus for the Jews to return to Judah, and began to rebuild the house of God after 70 years of exile from their homeland. The work on the temple and the obstacles presented are detailed as the remnant returns. Nehemiah is given permission by Artaxerxes to return to Jerusalem and begin rebuilding the walls that lie in ruin following the Babylonian destruction years earlier. 
the book complements the account of Ezra as they together rebuild Jerusalem and encourage the people. The events in the book of Esther occur around the time of the events recorded in Ezra and Nehemiah. The book gives an account of an attempted genocide of the Jews and how they're saved by Esther, who wins favor for her people. The origin of the Feast of Purim can be found in this book. In the next video, we'll look at the books of poetry or wisdom literature.